You're listening to Zap Night, a video game review podcast. Join your hosts Danny, Kaylee, Seth, and Evan as we review video games from all systems and all genres. They let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. You know me. I did my research. Watch as you became the soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you were strong and swift and brave. A natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something else no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome back to Zap Night. We are... What's going on, Zappers? What's going on, Zappers? We're back. Finally doing Halo 3. We're finishing off the trilogy. Um, the stunning conclusion to the Halo trilogy, as, as it says, these three as these three copies that we have, because... It's actually Halo 9. Yeah, if you actually, if you do uh, simple math, yes. you actually can get 9, and that's, that's For crazy. any of our listeners who don't do math, that is 3 plus 3 plus 3. Yes. So... Yeah. So, this is obviously... We do the math so you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. See, we're just trying to help you out. We're thinking about you guys. We're trying to get that 5 out of 5 review. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you saw Zapchats, you know what that means. Um, but obviously, um, this is the last Halo game in the Bungie trilogy. This is also our last review as a whole. So, we figured a good way to end it is to right where we finish began. Finish the fight. We're going to literally finish the fight. And uh, one final effort, yeah. And just gonna keep dropping song titles. This was the easiest effort because <laughs> Halo One we did over a span of a couple weeks, mm -hmm. and then Halo well, that was when we were back in school. No, was wait, it? were we? No, it was it was November of 2018. No, oh, yeah, so we were, we were, we're not that school. young. Come on, <laughs> we're not that young. Halo Two we did really quickly because we were playing Kingdom Hearts Three, <laughs> yeah, and then we had to get a game in, and this one we. This one, so we actually, so by the time you're listening to this, we beat this game like probably a month ago, because um, we mm. we were just like, okay, well let's just let's start playing. We started at like I was like eight o'clock at night. Well, it was like one week after we filmed it was the a, last podcast. Yeah, it was a week after we had done the last podcast, and then we the next weekend we just turned it on. We actually played with our two friends, um, Jacob and Cody, mm -hmm. and, and we Cody for better or worse. Yeah, well he was yeah he he made it. A little harder. We actually played it on Legendary, and it wasn't really so much the gameplay that was brutal. It, yeah, was, it was it there was hard parts. There were hard parts. Yeah, but it was um the With four uh, people we manned it out. You know. Yeah, but it was uh it was our teammate who really caused us the most uh, yeah. pain and Whether aggravation. Be throwing down shields in front of doorways. <laughs> yeah. So this is probably the this is probably the quickest game we've beat on the uh, on the podcast. I mean, obviously. Uh, Halo, I had like um, Half Life. I had a shorter time, but I didn't do it in one go. I did it over like a couple weeks. This is like the f this might be the only one we actually just sat down and we just did all in one one session yeah, together too. Yeah, I don't think we played a game together since Halo, Halo One. Yeah, Halo One. So literally the beginning and the end, we uh, <laughs> we toughed it out together. Come so far. So um yeah so story. Whoa! First of all. Halo 3 was... Oh, my bad. Bungie. Sorry, I'm a little I'm, I'm really excited, dude. It's on the 360. It's on the Xbox One in the Master Chief Collection. I think it's also backwards compatible, right? Yes. Eh, no. No? Yep. Oh. Just Reach and some of the wars. Okay. Yep. But it will soon be on PC if they ever announce it. If they uh, ever announce it, they said date. it was going to be 2019, so chop chop. It was released almost exactly 12 years ago. We're just 10 days off. Wow. September 25th, 2007. Yeah. That long ago. It's crazy. This game has actually aged pretty good, yeah. I'd say. We'll get into that yeah. after the story. <laughs> Which, uh, you just heard the first part from Evan. It was a little monologue mm -hmm. from Cortana. As Chief is falling from space... He was falling off uh, the ship from the end of Halo 2 because the Covenant decided to go back to Earth for reasons I'm about to tell you why. Um, well, I hope so. Well, that's what I'm here for. Okay, good, good stuff. Uh, well, Chief lands in Africa, right? You know, Johnson comes up to him. He's like, oh, man, this guy's paralyzed. Not again. What are we going to do? You know, Chief being the tough cookie he is gets up. That's and a sticks a gun right in the arbiter's mouth. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They aren't exactly friends, but by the end, they're they're best friends. They're friends. They're best friends. They love each other. Did you say RV? RB. Oh no. RB and the chief, dude. I want it. I want like a. I want to go get like a we have beef sandwich meats, from Arby's. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have to go rescue Johnson because he got taken by some brutes. Which is always that's always happening to him. It's He's always never, happening. That guy doesn't get a break. He really doesn't. Halo one, we don't know what happened. Halo two, something's wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. How do you get off that Halo? Anyway, that's a theory for another day. <laughs> start doing book reviews. Oh yeah, book reviews. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Tune into Audible. Yeah. Wow, it's almost like I made that joke earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so the Go Covenant on. came back to Earth because they were they were on Earth in Halo Two, right? Mm. But that was just because they wanted to take out another Halo or not Halo. They but wanted to human world. Yeah. But they didn't realize that Earth was our home planet, mm. so it was like the heavily most heavily defended. Yeah. It wasn't so like Reach. They came back with more people and they were trying to unearth the artifact buried in the sands of Africa near New Mombasa right. where they originally went mm-hmm. um, to find the portal to the Ark right. which for some reason is on Earth that's because the forerunners they um, even though they were like you know humans were enemies they knew it was only humans who could activate the halos so they, they left a mantle of responsibility. Yeah. But that's the story for Halo 4. Kind of. Well, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, the... For, for context for you guys, you guys understand. Yeah. Go ahead. I lost my train of thought. So, yeah, they were... <laughs> so they started digging in the deserts of New Mombasa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um... As chief, you're back. You're at like the the military base, um, helping uh, marines evacuate and get out. And uh, the marines decide to blow up the uh, the op center, so that way the covenant they couldn't get the data, they yeah. couldn't figure stuff out. Got a very threatening message from the prophet of truth, right? The leader of the covenant at the time. At the time, because the other two, the other two died. Yeah, you, in Halo Two, you beat one up, and then the other one got eaten. Yeah, the Ark, which was teased in Halo Two actually activates all the halos at once right. and it can create new halos mm-hmm. so that's why the covenant are trying to get to it because you know prophets are crazy and they just want to wipe right. out everyone right well actually they didn't i don't think they didn't really know though that it did that right they just they knew i mean it yeah, probably do they just didn't if they all didn't know they the prophet happen. knew they wanted to join the forerunners right but they so they actually so they successfully got the ark um out of the desert and as that yeah, they happens, got the portal to the ark. High charity, no, not high charity, just a covenant ship yeah. that is full of the flood crash lands, um, on Earth. Yeah. So the flood was on Earth. Mm-hmm. Well, it was for, for a sh- short period. For a short time, you can you contain it, and you um you you find well, a. You, uh, I mean, you you don't really contain it. You help. Well, you help like contain it. It's one guy and a couple of elites. So you contain it. Yeah, you go through <laughs> and you fight some flood. Then the Covenant that are on your side now, which are the elites, mm-hmm. because they defected from the Covenant, bring their ships, and they do what's called glassing, which is what they did to reach. They just... It's this laser beam, right? And it cooks, like... <laughs> it pretty much burns the surface. The surface till it's glass. Yeah, it makes it's it pretty like much unlivable. So that's what they did to the area where the flood landed. Mm-hmm. So it kept the flood from spreading around the Earth right. and ending, you know, humanity. Yeah. Um, you find a like a little device that contains a message from Cortana, who is still on high charity um, after the end of Halo 2. Um, you take it aboard the Covenant ship, and you play it back, and she reveals um, that she re- it was about the Ark, right? Yeah. Talking about where she was. Like where she was, and what like what their, yeah, what their plans are. And so then you, you travel to the Ark to... Um, it's to oh, wait, we almost forgot our favorite uh, little... Round boy, oh, guilty spark. Three yeah, for three. he comes back somehow. I mean, you saw him at the end of Halo Two. Um, the brutes had him, and now he's working with you. Yeah, Chief sticks a gun in his face too. This guy's then a problem friends. sticking guns in people's faces. He's not very. He's not very nice. <laughs> well, he gets betrayed all the time. That's true. Surrender the AI. <laughs> <laughs> they travel through the portal. <laughs> And they find the Ark, which looks like a giant flower in space. 
but it's not a pretty flower. It's not a pretty flower. No, it's not. It's, it's sandy. The Covenant, of course, already occupying lots of bases there. They, I don't think they had the index. Nope. To activate <laughs> the arc, so Cortana still would have had it, wouldn't they? Wouldn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So if they never, did she have it at the time? How are they gonna act? Oh, okay. Plot convenience. Okay, yeah, because <laughs> the arc could only be activated by humans. Right, and that's they used Johnson for that. Yeah, they captured Johnson and Keys. Keys being didn't the- capture her. No, she she. She sacrificed herself to try and go save Johnson. Yeah, Johnson getting captured, you know. Again. Oh, man. Keyes was the daughter of uh, Catherine Halsey and uh, Jacob Keyes of the Pillar of Autumn. Right. He... They beat up Johnson a lot, didn't they? They beat him up. Yeah, he was pretty bruised up by the time uh, Chief and the Arbiter got to him. And they were going to use him to activate the Halo Rings and uh, Miranda, Miranda Keys. Uh, she came in and trying to rescue him, but they realized, oh, they need a human to activate the rings. So she was going to shoot him and then herself so they couldn't use them to activate the rings. But before she could, she got shot in the back by the Prophet himself and Johnson was used to prime the rings. Yeah, seeing the prophet of truth walking around was kind of weird, and holding a gun. Oh, like, yeah, holding yeah. a holding a, a brute like, spiker that was a little weird. Um, but then uh, chief and arbiter they finally get down to where they were. They stop the rings, and arbiter kills the prophet. He must die. And then at that point, the flood shows up. And right, they they were they actually allied themselves with uh, chief and the arbiter just to get to the end where you could. Uh, Deactivate the rings, yeah. and then as soon as you activate it, they're they're trying to kill you. They're trying they're trying to kill you. It's because the flood doesn't want to be starved forever. Right, that's what the halo does. It wipes out the flood's food source, sentient right. life. Mm-hmm. So the flood teamed up with Chief and the Arbiter until they got to the Prophet and killed him and deactivated the rings, and then they were your enemies again. And for the rest of the game, you're trying to contain the flood. Right, you're trying to you kind of do a poor job and find Cortana. And find Cortana. So you end up to a lesser extent. You end up going back to High Charity. Yep. Where you find her. I hope you like that Halo Two mission because you're going back. You're going back, and it's more. It's worse than ever. It's fleshier. Now that mission, you are, you are only fighting the flood, and it's it's very. You're just going down and back essentially, and you get you know shotguns and energy swords, and it's already kind of an annoying mission. And I was really not excited about doing that one on Legendary. And it still kind of sucked, especially because of the teammates we had. And, you know, we were dropping down shields, blocking paths. You had the yeah. job, you get killed. Um, but we actually did better than what than It really wasn't that bad. Yeah. So, man, you end up finding Cortana. You get her back inside your Power Ranger helmet. Mm-hmm. And you you fly away to where um, the... the what, it's not the cartographer, is it? It's just the, the self to The uh, map room or something? Yeah, the map room. Um, Cortana goes, still having the index from Halo One somewhere, somehow. I don't know. She doesn't Uses have pockets. It to activate the new Halo that was created on the Ark, mm-hmm. and it's like it's still being built, so it's not ready to fire yet. So if it gets ready to fire, it'll blow up. Right. And that was the point. They wanted it to blow up, and also destroy part of the Ark. Right. So that the Ark couldn't be used again. Mm-hmm. Little did they know, Halo Wars Two had a better idea, but. <laughs> This isn't this isn't about Halo Wars too. So you get there, Johnson. He takes the index. He's gonna do his whole thing. That's when Guilty Spark uh, betrays you. He doesn't want to see another Halo blown up. Right. So he fatally wounds Johnson, and you have to fight him uh, with help from Johnson before he dies. Um, and then you you finish activating it, and you have to get out of there. Yeah, you activate the Halo, and you get in your Warthog, and you go through the most epic explosion thing ever. Which was a competition between the four of us. Because <laughs> yeah. me and, you guys were trying to like get in there, uh, trying to get into the ship before we did. See if we got left behind. Canonically, you know, Master Chief and the Arbiter made it into the Ford Under Dawn. Right. It's a ship. At the very, yeah, that you fly off in. And as it's exploding, you open up a portal to get out. Um, only half of the ship... Uh, makes it back to Earth. The other is just lost in deep space, mm-hmm. and that the half that <laughs> the lost, Arbiter was on the good half. He though. was on the good half. He was actually uh, like in the cockpit, and the other half with uh, Chief and Cortana. They were 
you know, they were stranded um, for a while. And then obviously that leads into Halo 4. And then Halo 3 ends with a memorial service um, that has, you know, pictures and, you know, medals of uh, all those who've fallen and a, uh, and scratched into like this little, like, you know, piece of plane they were using as like the memorial was 117, which is the uh, chief's like serial number. He's MIA. Right, because a Spartan technically can't be uh, considered KIA, only MIA. Even if you see them die. Which yeah. means the multiplayer, they're not, you, those technically aren't real kills if you get them. Yeah, your KD ratio is pretty good. It's just zero, zero. And yeah, so I can, this, the story for this game is probably the most polarizing from the from the fans some of them really like it and think it's great other ones are kind of mixed about it because it's for its like length and it's it was surprisingly short yeah for a game they put so much effort into yeah it's the it's the shortest game out of the trilogy there's only 10 levels nine if you're not including just a little you know prologue where you're looking up looking down and then they unlock your armor that 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 counts as a mission if you're you know through the uh as a chief collection, so there's really only nine. Um, so it is very short, and there's also um, quite a bit of repetition. There's a lot of missions where you're just going down and back and yeah. down and back in the same level. Um, quite a bit, actually. I was I was like thinking it over, and um, I mean, there's like I think there's four or five missions where you you're going all the way down, and you have to come all the way back. So you're not really seeing too many new environments. The part where you're in Africa, you go through and fight the Covenant, and then the flood show up, and you go through that same area. Yeah, you have, to, you have to backtrack all the way, not all the way, but like most of the way back, just to get to the that end of the ship, so you can you know find uh, the message from Cortana. And on uh, the mission called Cortana, where you go and get her in, inside of High Charity. Yeah, you were in High Charity in Halo Two. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's obviously like there's, it's changed because the grave mind and mm-hmm. the flood have pretty much taken it over but it's it is pretty much the exact same and all you're doing is you're going all the way down to get Cortana, and then you have to come all the way back which at the end of that i was talking about this there should have been like a grave mind fight because we never got to fight the grave mind nope. we don't even know if he's really dead i assume because uh or what where was high, high charity it was um it landed on the ark it landed on the ark so when they blew it up i maybe it's supposed to be like you know Supposed to be like, oh, hey, well, since it blew up, it destroyed High Charity with it. And for those of you who don't know, a grave mind is uh, just a giant flood yeah. that collected a bunch of intelligence from eating intelligent life. It's kind of disgusting. Yeah, it talks. It's a weird hentai monster. Ugh. So, yeah, I feel like they could have done more with the story. Um, give us a little more satisfying Right. Um, I did like the the ending with um, you know Chief going into cryo sleep, waking you know waking you. That's when you how need the series me. started, right? Right. It's, yeah, it started in a cryo tube and ended in a cryo tube. So I mean, I thought the the ending was good, but um, the way they just went throughout the story was kind of just rushed. It was like, okay, now you're in Numbasa. Oh no, exactly where to go. Let's go to the Ark. Oh no, exactly where to go. Let's go to the map room. You know. So I mean, it was just. And that was on the Halo. Right. So it was just you're just it's just really quick. And he doesn't really give you a whole lot of time to just process what's going on. I feel like with Halo, with the original Halo, um, you get st- you get kind of stuck sometimes. So it kind of gives you more an idea like what exactly is going on. Mm-hmm. Halo Three, it's like okay, take what already you know, and we're just you know it's it's finishing it. It's really just finishing it. And I mean, honestly, I know it, they decided to do the cliffhanger thing for Halo Two. I honestly think that they could have shortened this and then just put it as like the ending of halo 2 they probably could have um if they really wanted to if they just condensed it down because it is pretty short they really there's one mission and they took built five missions out of it mm-hmm. um so i mean it is what it is but for the story i i thought it was good and I, it was a good halo story and i liked it it was the stunning conclusion it was the, the stunning halo conclusion trilogy. yeah what'd you end up giving it i gave it an eight I also gave it a name. Um, so, pretty average for the Halo. Um, obviously, I'm a bigger fan of Halo 2s because it was a huge jump um, from Halo 1, which was kind of just you're always on the Halo, while in Halo 2 you're more you're on Earth and you are on another Halo and then you're fighting a bunch of stuff. This one is just like, okay, you're on Earth 
and oh boy there's another halo coming out of the ground you know it's like okay <laughs> that like that that ending scene where like they may press the button and then the halo just comes out of you know wherever they are and just it just rises up and it's made out of like trash or something i'm just looking at like what like <laughs> i got like you got no warning that that was gonna happen yeah so hey, it's what guilty spark wanted okay? it's what he wanted man it was all that guilty spark floating fun. eyeball that got destroyed yeah did we say that he died yeah we killed him yeah you kill him you fight him he blows up gameplay it's same uh, pretty much same idea as the other ones it's a your typical halo shooter they did add a, a couple things they added uh equipment that you could um, throw down everything from bubble shields which you know you can't shoot you know can't get bullets so you can't throw grenades in um heal i call it healing gas just because that's kind of what it looks like but it's yeah. it's just a little healing field that uh, re- uh regenerates your shields faster um, power drains that takes down your shield really quick. Oh, those are fun. Those are they great. blow up too. Um, flares which <laughs> blind you. They're not helpful. They all they do is hurt you. Even if you're using them against an enemy, you're still gonna be blind. There's also the portable shields which are just create a big uh, right that we use to uh, yeah, kind of block, block each other. Ways. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were all guilty of that one. Um, and of course the the little boost, the those little, landmines too. Yeah, yeah, landmines. Those made it in there, which I tried to use so many times, and then we would never go near them. Yeah. So it was, you know, useless. Um. So that was pretty much the only really new addition. Uh, there was some new vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, that they came did, in there. Did a lot with the brutes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they yep. had a lot of brute weapons and vehicles that we never saw in another Halo game, mm-hmm. unfortunately, because they were really cool. Like the elephant that you only really get to use in yeah. that one multiplayer map. Well, they're an ODST for oh, yeah. that last mission. Yeah, but you don't get to drive that. You have to drive a warhog mm-hmm. and then a tank. <coughs> Fortunately. Um, yeah. Oh, it's not. I mean, it's still. It is still the same old, you know, Halo gameplay. But it, it seemed floatier than Halo Two. Yeah. Like Halo One was floaty. Like everything, like just drifted around. You know. Mm-hmm. Jumps were higher, you know. Right, but in Halo 1, you didn't want to, you know, jump off something really high because that one, you actually would get fall damage. And this one, you don't have fall damage. This one, you have nothing. So you can jump, go wherever you want, unless, of course, you're falling into, like, you know, a a no-go zone, then you're going to die. Well, yeah. At the beginning of the game, she fell from space, and he's perfectly fine. Right. His armor was locked, but he was perfectly fine. I mean, (laughs) he got up. He got up, yeah. He stopped. He was being a baby, but he he was fine. Some of the iconic guns were quieter, like the assault rifle and the pistol, and they, they, nobody used them because they, they were so. Yeah, they felt quieter and they felt nerfed. weaker. Yeah, the the Magnum, which is in Halo One, is like the pro, is like the battle rifle of like Halo Two. You know, you you have your assault rifle, which is great for you know mowing down grunts, three or four grunts that are right in front of you. But then you got the Magnum. You know, you, sh- you know, great with headshots, taking out the elites. That's the main weapon I would you know most people probably used. Um, obviously, use the assault rifle on campaign makes more sense, but in multiplayer, yeah, you don't use it. Yeah, you don't use the assault rifle, and then they just made it even worse. Not only did they make it sound weaker and feel weaker, but they dropped the ammo capacity. <laughs> yeah, in Halo One, you had six. 100 rounds in reserve and you had 60 in your gun and this one it's like 350 something in reserve and like 32 in the mag so yeah not only so it's underpowered and they gave you less ammo to work with the battle rifle did come back obviously so the king was still there um but yeah the magnum uh the smg obviously it's still dual wieldable so i mean that one you can still do that i really like dual wielding i don't know why they won't bring it back i don't know why but they made the needler you can't dual wield the needler thing. that was God. weird i it was broken but it was weird how you just can't do it now i didn't mind it too much i because i mean that's if you use that gun in multiplayer i can't use this word but you're you're bad you're a bad person if you use that <laughs> multiplayer so yeah, so I was okay with it. It combined a lot of elements from Halo One and Two, mm-hmm. and it it was really fun with four people. Oh yeah, with four people it was great. It was fun by itself, really. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Easter eggs, like uh, the eight people that you can find, and the red versus blue stuff. Yeah, that I didn't know was there, but Jacob pointed out. Mm. 
They had Rooster Teeth. Uh, Red versus Blue, which has been closely linked with the Halo series for being like, well, I also want to like the first Machinimas. They, uh, they actually brought in some of the uh, the creators, some of the voice actors who uh, voice Red versus Blue and they actually have them in, uh, in an Easter egg that changes depending on the difficulty you're playing on. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to see them actually uh, do something, continue, continually doing something with the, uh, with the community. One part of the gameplay that I thought was really annoying in the campaign was the grave mine and Cortana messages. Yes. It, it would w- slow down everything and it'd take over your screen. It was almost like a hallucination. Yeah. And so it would slow everything down. Yeah, it would like wa- it would like zoom out your screen and you'd just get a bunch of bright lights or like just really gray. And it was annoying, especially in the Cortana mission mm-hmm. because you're just trying... There try- was a ton of them in Right, you're one. just trying to get through and you're just trying to get it done. And even if you're in a firefight, they can happen whenever. You can be fighting... You, like, you know, five different enemies, and it will just happen to you. And you will lose because... The only good part is, I think, it makes you invincible when it's happening, doesn't it? it I've doesn't. died many times. Really? Yeah. That's... Just, mm-hmm. Or what are you doing, Bungie? I don't know what they were doing. I mean, that's still a great game, I'll tell you what. It was also Bungie's last main game. Yeah. So obviously the last one they wanted to do. Right. And then Activision... But not... You know, Microsoft was like, now Activision. I actually just love the Activision. That's hilarious. Yeah, Microsoft was like, no, we need, you know, get to keep going. And now they're trying to make Halo last for like 30 more years, something like that. I think Infinite's probably going to be the last for the Chief. Probably. So, uh, the graphics, <clears throat> or actually, gameplay. I gave gameplay 7 out of 10. I gave it, I gave it a 7. Yeah. Graphics? But, yeah, graphics pretty good they put a lot of effort in this game it said uh i think i saw a statistic one time that halo 3 is like the most expensive shooter that has ever been created Mm -hmm. as of like 2011 right because like they put so much time and effort into this no yeah and so many boxes of pizza so many pizza bunch of guys love to eat pizza when they're making games it's just a necessity when you're making a game (laughs) yeah and it still holds up to like today's standards, I'd say. Like, ah, it still it it looks great. <laughs> some of the faces and the people could use some work though. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, the game world looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. And on the Master Chief Collection, running it, you know, sixty a better, frame, yeah, better looks fine. Right? Yeah. So I mean, this this game was obviously, and for two thousand seven too, there was a lot of you know, two thousand seven is kind of looked at as like one of the best years for gaming. So many like, great games came out, and this was this was. Well, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of games that come out in 2007 that people are like, oh, wow, this is the best game of the year. This is one of the better looking games of that This year. came out the same year Fallout 3 came out, right? A year before. A year before? Mm-hmm. And Fallout, see, a year before, and Fallout 3 had nowhere near yeah. the graphics yeah, this has. No way. This came out before GTA 4, and I mean, while GTA 4, it's like, you know, it's this really big game. I This is much prettier to look at than GTA 4. I'd say it has better graphics than Reach, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind of weird. Mm. Well, I mean, that's kind of the same way with, like, Halo 4 and Halo 5. How it's, like, Halo 5... Yeah, 4 has better graphics than 5. Yeah. So. Weird. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. No, it's a great-looking game. Um, I ended up giving it a 9. Give it an 8. Give it an 8. Nice. Okay. Um, bringing back the Havoc engine, and they actually didn't use the Havoc engine after this. <coughs> what they use? I don't know. Oh, I thought I saw it on the back of the anniversary box. They might have used it for that. This is the last one that Bungie, that Bungie used. Oh, okay. Like, the, like uh, the continuous updated version of Havoc. They just used like the Halo Three version of Havoc for like Reach and ODST. Gotcha. So they didn't update it past this because this was technically like the last one. But um, still pretty cool. The music. Kind of the same, some new. Little they changed obviously the main theme. Obviously, it's still the same. You know, kind of epic sounding. See, well, Halo Two took. They added a lot of new music, right, to mm-hmm. Halo Two. Mm-hmm. But for the remixed ones from Halo One, they added like guitar. Stuff right, that right. Yeah. Halo Three did the same thing, but added pianos instead of guitars. Yeah. With that was that was actually it was really strange. With Halo Two, it was they added much more kind of like alternative like metal kind of sound to a lot of them. I mean, they got a lot of, like, big bands to come on. That See, was one th- now that's, like, you're going into some carnage, right? Right. Like, you're down for the fight. Mm-hmm. Halo 3 is, like, epic. That's yeah. That's, like, the tone there. It was epic sounding, for. yeah. Um, obviously, me 
being a metalhead, obviously I liked Halo 2s more because I mean they had like Breaking Benjamin and Incubus and Hoobastank. And this it was, you know, it was it was it was it was nice sounding. So it was nice to listen to. I actually downloaded the Halo 3 soundtrack and mm-hmm. it came with a song called uh Love Your Friends. I think I've showed you it before. Probably. It was kind of metalish. Mm-hmm. It had sounds from the game in it too. It's kind of funny. But nice. a lot of the songs on the soundtrack are no fun to listen to. Some of them are flood songs, and it's like got this weird, like grave mind talking in reverse, you know. Mm-hmm. And like if you're not gonna go back and play it, you know, normally, what's the point? It's like all it is is a bunch of random instruments playing, and then grave mind talking backwards. It's like I don't want to listen. And to And then this. most likely you would you would probably even miss that too if yeah. you're just playing the game normal. You wouldn't even like yeah. you know catch that. A lot of songs in the Halo Three soundtrack go from a orchestrated thing. And then into the flood. Right. And it just sounds awful, in my opinion. Right. Um, with Halo 2, obviously, everyone remembers Blow Me Away. Mm-hmm. Um, during uh, the, one of the final missions of the game, you go into the chamber and everyone's just fighting. And you got this epic, you know, sound that just makes you feel like you're literally in this, like, crazy, you know, battle. You got no no teammates. It's a, it's a free-for-all. And this, there was some epic, you know, there was some fights. You know, there was a lot of big fight scenes. But there wasn't really any like music to, you know, pump me up and be like, oh man, like it's like. Other than danger. the end with the Halo theme. Yeah. During the Warthog run. Mm. Yeah, which, that one. You know, that's classic. That, yeah, that, I mean, that, that, I think Halo had one to did that. the same thing, didn't it? Yeah. Only that time they put you on a timer. Yeah. So I mean, you, you were it was more you were you were listening well, to this awesome track. The music. Yeah, and you were stressful. Yeah. So yeah. This was stressful for uh, the two other War. The two other people in the other Warthog. Yeah. Because they couldn't keep up with the first people, so all the landscape was falling apart. Oh, yeah, so you guys kept falling off. How many times did you... Wait, really? Yeah. I couldn't keep up with you guys. Oh. And the landscape's falling apart, like, right behind you guys. Oh, okay. You couldn't keep up. Oh, wow. So every time you die and respawn, we'd just try and get in your Warthog. Oh, gotcha. Which only one of you would have been able to get in. Mm -hmm. And then the other one would just be left behind. That was... uh, we were even deciding before that. We were like, I was telling uh, our two friends, I was like, all right, obviously me and Seth automatically get seats because, you know, it's just our thing. So you guys are going to have to decide which one of you gets left behind. <laughs> we're not making it off this Halo. Right. And in the end, it was Seth didn't even technically make it. I didn't make it. I saw you guys make it. Yeah. I made a joke too. Like, what if, because at the end, you jump the Warthog into the Ford under mm-hmm. Dawn. And I was like, what if we're coming from the other end? And like, <laughs> that would be funny. What if you like totally like, airball and you just completely miss? <laughs> that would be the end of Halo 3. No! <laughs> Step funny. on it, Chief! Like, what you pedal? There's six of them in here. <laughs> he's going to speed limit, you know, he's going <laughs> yeah. 65. And he's like, have you seen all this crazy stuff? I don't want to go fast. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's people on the road. There's grunts walking around. Right, there's grunts and there's like little flood carriers. And like, he's like driving around. around all of them. <sighs> right. See if we gotta go. Right. So while the music was good Halo music, it wasn't as It was big. okay. Yeah, it was big. I gave it a seven. I gave it a seven too. So Oh man. Not bad, but you know. Average. There was lots of screeching in the flood songs too, and it was like I don't I don't know. I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. That's probably the only thing. That's not to me. That's the only thing that's holding me back from this being my favorite Halo. But it's a combination of things. But if you don't play the campaign, music's great. Then yeah, exactly. The menu music is awesome. I know it's so good. I I really like actually the menu music because I mean I with all the backgrounds that they have for like Halo One, like Halo One, it was just the the opera singing and you're just kind of rotating around the uh, the Halo ring. Mm-hmm. And Halo Two, you were overlooking the uh, new the, the, Bumab, the, the 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 kids bop album. The new Bob, <laughs> the new, new kids bop album. Right. And then this one. Um, you were kind of just in the desert watching a battle in the distance. And then when you hit, yeah. when you hit start, it's a uh, master chief and arbiter just standing there like, you know, looking epic and blue and blue. Yeah. Very blue. Um, blue. Daba D copyright strike. We're not playing it, but we sounded so much like the real, I thing. know Eiffel 65 is going to copyright us. We just <laughs> sound too much like them. Yep. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was really fun. A really fun game. Yeah, it was actually fun. This is like the first time I actually played it uh, with somebody in a long time. I used to play this um, with my, my sisters. 
um, well, my one sister, we would always play the co-op, and then uh, me and uh, both my sisters and even my stepdad, we would all uh, hop into forge mode, completely like delete an entire map, and then just build our own. Um, and that was great. That was one thing that was awesome with this map was the forge mode. Yeah, they added forge mode. Forgot to add that to gameplay. Yeah. That was a pretty good uh, improvement. It allowed you to make your own customizations to maps. Mm-hmm. You can add, you can delete, you can put in, you can completely, you can make new game modes. Um, yeah, they really inspired a lot of custom creation among the fans, mm-hmm. which continues into this day with right. every new Halo game. Yep. Very community oriented. It's like different from all the other shooters, which you got a mod to do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. This it, one embraces that. Right. You know, they had the whole team action sack um, playlist going on. So they added Griffball, theater mode. Griff, yep, theater mode. I think file Infection sh- was in there. Infection was in there. They, added, I love Infection. they added file sharing. Yeah, and so you could get other players. Yeah, you could you could maps. share maps, you could share game modes, you could uh, share clips that you hit. So if you claim that you got a uh, a kill tacular like my friend did with a magnum on Valhalla, you now had the ability to prove that. Yeah. Um, they also added um, armor customization. Yep, and like literally everything, yeah. not as much Which, as reach. What people want to come back. Right. Not just you the know reach your helmet. customization. Right. You could play as elites like in Halo 2, but they didn't have as many armor options. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I pretty much... I played, I think I played as an elite for a little while there because I thought it was cool. And then I was like, I'm going to go back to Spartan. Oh, and they ended gender, or added gender equality. Oh, can you play as... You can add a female voice to your Spartan instead of a male voice. See? If you don't like listening to Steve Downs go... <laughs> yeah. Or uh, the elites go. I can't do the noise. Blah, blah that that <laughs> that, that uh, Nakey Jakey did so well. Blarg. Blarg, yeah. <laughs> wart, wart, wart. They don't go that wart in this game. That was actually really good. <laughs> they don't go wart in this game. I was that mad was about so that. That was so good. They all speak English now. It sucks. But in Halo 4, they don't speak English. I don't so, know why. They had to make a language for them. Wart. <laughs> yeah, it was very conclusive, cooperative, well-designed. Sometimes. Sometimes. Lots uh, of love and pizza was put into this mm-hmm. game. Right. Which is all you really This was really need. Bungie's... It was supposed to be their last game mm-hmm. that they wanted to make. Right. I had a lot of pr- good promotion. I think in Halo 2, we talked about the Isle of Bees ARG, which was their viral marketing campaign that they had for uh, Halo 2, which was kind of like a beekeeping website that got taken over by this AI, and it ended with the Covenant invading Earth. Um... They, there was a viral marketing campaign for Halo 3. I don't really know what it was, but there was, um, there was a set of ads um, that are sometimes considered like the greatest video game commercials of all time. The first one being the Starry Night ad, um, which um, sh- uh, didn't really reveal too much. It revealed the, re- the, re- uh, the comeback of the assault rifle and the bubble shield. And then there was the... Bu- oh, where it's like the missile coming out. Yep, and like- he throws it down real quick, yeah. And then there was the Believe ads which uh, centered around this fictional museum of humanity with interviews of, uh, um, you know, past soldiers who fought alongside the chief in this one battle that they have on display in this, like, diorama of this, like, certain battle that took place over the course of, like, the brute was holding up chief like he was dead or something. right. But he's got the... And the final final advertisement for the Believe is the entire diorama to Chopin's uh, Prelude 15, um, which is very emotional. It's it. It's so. I mean, it's not like you're not gonna cry, but it's like, oh, like it's deep. And it ends yeah. with yeah, a, a brute holding up his assault rifle and chief. But chief is has a plasma grenade that lights up, and then he looks up at the screen and it says "Believe." I think there was uh, some live action trailers for Halo Three too. Yeah, the, people have been using for like every new Halo game. Since yeah, then. it was um it was leaked Halo 5 gameplay and it's just a Halo 3 trailer. Yeah, it, well those believe ads there were there were uh like live action uh commercials. Uh like live action like interviews with these uh soldiers about like, you know, oh, I was in the back of a of a turned upside down warhog firing a machine gun. The chief just walked up and flipped it just, just like that elephant. It. He didn't he just looked How at it. Do that? He just looked at it and it just flipped. <laughs> it's like he mentally pressed right bumper and it just flipped over. Tank beats everything. <laughs> um yeah, so obviously I I mean I love that ad. I um just that that song and just the the imagery that you see 
um, it really makes you feel like you're about to really go you're really going to be playing the end of something obviously the battle that was in this was never you know you didn't get to be part of it in the game see um, there's a difference between that and the halo 5 uh, marketing campaign mm -hmm. the halo 5 marketing campaign just straight up lied this said believe right yeah so you had to believe whatever you wanted to believe so even if they showed something that wasn't like technically in the game it was your choice to believe whether that was real or not. They weren't marketing as, okay, this is what's actually going to be or what's going to happen. Maybe. I don't know. I, just, I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Halo 3 was the first Halo I ever played. Mm -hmm. My friends were playing multiplayer on it back in 2010, and I hopped right in. That's great, man. They have a lot of great multiplayer maps. Yeah, they do. So iconic. I love them all. Sand Trap, Avalanche, that one Rainforest one was pretty cool. The rainforest one, yeah. I like Rat's Nest, too. Rat's Nest is pretty good. Valhalla, which is just Halo 3's Blood Gulch. Yeah, basically. But now has an ocean in the back. That's Ooh. pretty cool. That better be where Blue Team's at. And a sniper rifle that every teammate fights over. <laughs> yeah. They added a lot. Yeah. I don't think any... Only like one or two maps came back from Halo Two, and I don't think any came back from Halo One. I don't. Yeah, I don't think any came back from Halo One. But yeah, um, Ivory Towers, I think was the name of the the one. But no, it was Zanzibar from Halo Two came back. Okay, there was a couple more Halo Two ones than I thought. Yeah, like there was Blackout. Yeah, the Ice One. Uh, uh, midship. Yeah, the Covenant yep. ship one and the weird. The windmill, windmill one. It's called Zanzibar in Halo 2. And it's got this it, it got, wind turbine. Yeah, it thing. got a new name in uh, in Halo 3. I just can't remember what its name was. <laughs> yeah. I never I never actually really played that map. I was like, it was almost constantly Valhalla, Narrows, um, and the, um, the uh, oh, what's the, um, uh, Sidewinder. They brought back Sidewinder mm. from Halo 1. Did they? Yeah, it was the, it's like the U, like the U map. You know, the blue team's up on one side, which is on the that other side. Halo 1? Yeah, it was Sidewinder. Oh. Yeah. That's a confusing map. It is a confusing map, and you only play it when you're playing big team battle. That's the only time, unless you're playing custom maps. <laughs> it, it's just not in rotation if you're doing, you know, Team Slayer or whatever. Oh. Yeah. They actually gave you more options this time, though. They added a, a social playlist, and they gave you a ranked playlist. Um, social playlist was just for the more casual. Kind of people are like where the people would go to practice, and then the ranked, obviously, is where the, you know, where MLG was on the line. Halo 2, you know, really brought a lot to Xbox Live, really sold those memberships. Halo 3 capitalized on all mm -hmm. that and kept the flow going. It took it back from Gears of War. Because <laughs> Gears of War took it from uh, from Halo 2 in 2006, and then Halo 3 took it back from Gears of War, and then Gears of War never got it back. Ever. Ever. Nope. Though with all this promotion for Gears 5, we'll see. Halo's in it. Oh, yeah. They do have uh, Halo Reach in there. So, it's still technically Halo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got them good. We always win. <laughs> we do always win. Overall, I gave it a 10. I want to say I gave it a 8. I gave it an 8. Which okay. would be a total of 40 out of 50 for me. Yep, 39 for me. Total, 79 out of 100. Which is our lowest for it's the, every Halo. It's the lowest done. rated Halo score, though, honestly... It would be Halo 1. It would be... Yeah, Halo 1's my least favorite of the three. Right, and we gave it a, a 90. Yeah. So. I think we just weren't hard enough on it. Like, now we're expert critiques, right? And we can pick apart these games. We, but we were, we were just we were, we, we were able to... We started looking at games, like, different. Like, I started looking at this game more different than I would other games. Um, and so that's why this one was more honest as to where Halo was just like, I'm just trying to make Halo look good. You know, I'm just trying to like, oh, like, this is a really good game. You guys need to play this. In reality, yeah, this one would be the lowest score. I'm not calling Halo 1 a bad game. It's, obviously. They're, none of them are bad right. games. Right. They're all worth a try. Right. Yeah. Halo 3. Halo 3. So, with the uh, stunning conclusion to the Halo trilogy <laughs> done, it is now time for the, uh, the stunning conclusion of Team 7. I'm a little sad Chocobro couldn't join us here. Chocobro couldn't join us. Um, I don't he's even know, a busy guy. I don't even know where he is. I think he still has your sunglasses, so you're probably not getting those back. It's, he needs them more than me. Yeah, because he's always inside. 
because he's cool. He is pretty. I'm not cool. He's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> Go check out Chocobro on his Instagram. Yeah, at Chocobro. Uh, check out his Mixer page. He left Twitch because he uh, he wanted to be different. And he he didn't like Twitch platforms. Now he's playing Fortnite on Mixer. I think I'm talking about the wrong guy here. I yeah. Think, oh, maybe. Maybe I don't know who that guy is though. Man, pretty inspirational. <laughs> so, yeah, as you guys as you guys now know, this is this is it. This is it for me and Seth here. Um, it's been. It's been over a year since we technically joined, um, and it's been awesome. You know, it's been great to come out here. I had a good time. Yeah, play, s- play some games that I probably uh, wouldn't play or replay some games. Um, obviously, I don't wish any upon anyone to play Sonic Adventure or Doomsick 2016, oh but, you know, I can't control you, and I can't stop you. Um, so I guess really what I want to say is thank you. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I want, I want to thank Danny and Kaylee for letting us uh, come on here and uh, giving us and, lots of opportunities, right? Um, to you know be able to, to be able to connect more with an audience, and uh, it was um, it was awesome. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. As always, go check out you know Instagram, Facebook, um, iTunes. Go check out the iTunes. Um, and more recently, uh, Audible. <laughs> That's coming one day. One day, I can't wait for that. <laughs> um yep go check out gaming podcast alliance and um the avengers the avengers you know and uh yeah for the very last time <laughs> zap on and zap off thank you